address this concept quickly. If anyone in this room is looking for an instructor, a drill instructor, a sergeant or lieutenant to get you through this academy, get up and get out now. It's not going to happen. I'm not here to get you through the academy. That's not my function. It's not my job. My job is to place obstacles in front of you. It's your job to develop a process and how to get through those obstacles and move forward. My job is to make things uncomfortable. Uncomfort, discomfort promotes change, promotes better habits. From there, it's up to you whether you develop the self-discipline to sustain those habits moving forward. Make sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. If you're looking from the outside, for outside factors to get you through this academy, do not come back on the 8th. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Hello, and welcome to Fido Talk with David Thompson. It's been a bit since we put anything out. Um, we're back at it, a little bit of a break, working on some other projects, um, but back in the mix now and, and hope to develop some more consistency. I appreciate your patience, and a lot has happened since the last time we were on as far as current events, as far as things happening in the world. Today I'd like to touch on not necessarily specific events, but just the reaction as a whole, the reactions and what lessons we can extract from them as leaders, not only leaders of people, but leaders of ourselves. What kind of lessons can we take from them and kind of use that for our own personal growth and development moving forward. So if we, if we kind of look at everything that's been going on and how it's presented, there, there's a lot of stuff going on that people are taking taking in a very emotional stance on on one side and or the other how do we navigate that as leaders of people so let's start there if we're if we're to be leading people and and we continue to use the the three priorities of leadership and we start with the overall mission statement or the overall goal if the overall goal is to end something or to continue with something we no matter what what side we're on one way or the other we have to take care of the people who will take care of that goal, right? Then we take care of ourselves. So it comes back to the people. Are the people going to be good given the decision? Um, in whatever decision it may be. Um, is it what's best for the people, the people in our charge? Or is the best decision left up to the people? I don't know. I do know this, that in order to lead lead oneself and make decisions, right, we can, again, it comes back to doing what's easy or what's right. What's right for, what's right for you as an individual based upon your own values and principles. And that's what makes right and wrong irrelevant. I I know that sounds a little convoluted, but bear with me. 
right and wrong is always going to be within somebody's perspective. It's always going to be based upon somebody's beliefs, experiences, values, principles, mentors, examples, so forth and so on. Whatever someone believes to be right. And it's a belief. It's a belief system based on a bunch of variables. It's never going to be the same perspective as someone else because no two people will ever have the same experiences. It just, it's just not that math doesn't work. It just doesn't, right? Uh, people can agree in general and in, you know, overall principle and things like that. However, I don't know if two people will ever agree exactly on the same exact details as passionately and as 100% as people think they will, right? So... How do you come to an objective, logical, rational, cerebral decision based upon your values and principles? I think a good start is to identify what your values and principle systems are. It could be based on a whole bunch of things. It could be based on religious beliefs. It could be based on you know, natural beliefs is some belief system that that you were imparted or was imparted upon you somewhere in life, right? You know, somehow, some way. So stick with your principles and values. Then understand where you're getting your information from, right? Again, this this two sides and maybe more, right? Everyone has a belief system. Everyone has a perspective. These days, everything seems to be sensationalized. Everything seems to be extreme to one side or the other. If we keep the perspective of, or the understanding of that, that there's two sides or maybe more in different angles and different ways of seeing things. The hard part where the effort comes in is to actually dive into looking into the side that you initially don't agree with or don't see as being right. So, to, to pause, take a step back, take a look at things from the opposite side. It's not, it's not exactly easy. It requires some self-discipline, some self-control, some objectivity. Let's look at the source of this information. And I'm going to take this all the way back to the American Revolution. The Boston Gazette does a some newspapers from Pennsylvania, from Connecticut, from even back to the original 13 colonies. And those were used as propaganda, and especially as soon as the invention of the printing press, right? Benjamin Franklin would join or die. If you don't join, you're going to die. The, the British are going to kill you. It's, you know, and then the whole taxation without representation, the Boston Tea Party, all this stuff. It's propaganda. Whether you believed in the cause or a cause or not. It, it, was, it was propaganda and it was used very effectively, right? Very efficiently, very effectively. That is still used today at scale. The principles behind that are no different from social media, from Facebook, from Twitter, from all the platforms out there now, from the gram. Everything is a perspective. Everything is agenda-driven one way or the other. And it's used to shape opinions. And it's used to get support on one side or the other. And I don't care what subject we're talking about or what issue or what 
is on the table at this time, whatever the hot issue is that's going to be put on the back burner in a couple of weeks when the next hot issue comes, it, it doesn't matter what it is. The, the easy thing is to jump on the, a bandwagon, a bandwagon, one or the other, for because it, it'll save you some time and effort to actually look into something, to question what's driving this or, or what's behind this or what's the opposite side. That comes back to truth. Somebody thinks it's the truth or it's a lie. Again, that's all going to come back to perspective, perspective, right? Um, whatever your beliefs are, whatever you believe in, and facts are meant to be disproved. If you look at the scientific community from even as early as the 60s and 70s up to today, there's all kinds of facts being disproved, right? Nine planets, ten planets now, uh, solar systems, um, what foods were good for you, what foods are not good for you, the way things are done. Um, you, any different subject or genre or whatever can be dispelled given the right research perspective, looking at things from a different way. Anything can be. Again, it all comes back to personal perspective. It's going to be what you decide is the truth, what you decide is right or wrong, a truth, a lie, whether you're being snowballed or not. To reach 100% objectivity, which would be phenomenal, I think is a, fool errand, a fool's errand. I don't think we're ever going to get there. I do think, though, that it's important to try to get as close to it as you possibly can, especially if you're going to lead yourself to allow yourself as an individual leader, a leader of yourself, to be strung up and hand puppeted around based on someone else's perspective agenda, bandwagon propaganda, I think is, in, in my opinion, inherently weak. I, I really do. I, I think it is very weak because as you progress and you start taking on appointed leadership and having other people in your charge, and you don't have a grasp or some grasp of objectivity, of open-mindedness, the ego sets in, right? It, it, that kind of solidifies that ego of, I'm on this side of this issue, and I'm digging my heels in, and this is it, my way or our way, this way, is the best way, right? That leads down to the road, you know, when a situation comes up, well, we've always done it this way. Well, not every situation is 100% the same, ever, ever, right? It's never the same. I think that is a very uh, cop-out, type of approach to doing things. Um, so having some objectivity and keeping open-minded and promoting the communication to the people you work with, to the people in your charge, to the people above you in, in rank, in, in appointed positions and things of that nature to keep that open communication and that objectivity understanding that maybe I don't have as much information 
from someone else's position to make a decision or to to have a perspective i think is the way to go and it's especially if if we're not satisfying the why right always questioning no maybe not out loud or in a disrespectful manner or anything like that that's not what i'm suggesting i'm suggesting asking why we're doing something uh why is one side so solidified in their stance what's what's the reasoning behind that and then why is there a polar opposite side that's ready to you know get down and and butt heads and and go to battle on the opposite side like what's the reasoning there is it is there some other reason and and what's going on um why is the person below me making those or the person next to me making the, their decisions why is a person above me making their decisions and then growing and and developing your approach accordingly depending upon what arena you're working in i think when you start working in different arenas that the costs are a little bit high whether it be military first responder um that type of thing i think that situations do tend to change and you have to you have to be mindful of flexibility and um there's a time and a place for everything so during a a, a high pressure incident or during something that's um has the potential to inflict injury or, or cost human life or that kind of thing uh, there's a time and a place to question the why it doesn't mean that you shouldn't question the why it's just be mindful of when you know <laughs> when when it's when it's go time that's not the time to to say hey wait a minute why are we doing this or or why are we doing it this way or this that or the other thing it's it's time to to act and and that should be um that should definitely should be said i think i think that is is very important i think that people who tend to side with one side or the other um tend to run more on emotion they tend to fall into the propaganda trap i'll call it a trap because it's easy right um just like the fall of rome we're fat and happy we're content because it's easy, a nation of convenience, uh, convenience and comfort. Convenience and comfort do not promote change. They do to mo- do not promote gro- promote growth. Um, maybe around the waist, but they don't promote growth professionally, personally, mind, body, spirit. That, that's not how it works. Um. And the process is going to be different for every individual. It's finding the process that's best for you, right, as an individual leader. Because we have to take care of ourselves. We have to lead self daily, right? How more? We have to lead self. We have to self-lead, lead ourselves daily. Once we have those fundamentals of leadership down those 11 principles and live them day to day we can start to apply them when an opportunity comes to lead others whether that's an appointed an assumed role an appointed role you know promotion etc 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 and it all starts with the basics I listened to a great podcast earlier and they were talking about repetition, right? Repetition. 
And, and that's what fundamentals are, right? It's just repetition. And that st- starts with yourself. Um, we, we have talked, I think, in previous podcasts about inspiration, motivation, and influence. All that stuff is temporary, right? That'll get the fire going, but you have to stoke that fire yourself. I believe Gawkin said that. Uh, don't quote me on but I believe David Goggins said that. Like, motivation will definitely spark that fire, but you have to stoke it. How do you stoke it? Like, how do you get there? Right? We we hear a lot about, you know, being influenced, being inspired, being motivated. Those are all emotionally based processes. Emotion comes with ebbs and flows. Right? Ebbs and flows. We get really pumped up when we hear or see something that hits those heartstrings. We may lash out, we may make a comment, we may do whatever whatever um, hits us at, the, at that moment. And it's almost, I don't want to say totally uncontrollable, but it's difficult to control. So what's the answer? I think getting back to Hal Moore's lead self daily is, is forming routines. And if you listen to Dr. Um, Andrew Huberman, if you listen to Gary John Bishop, if you listen to some of those ophthalmologists and some of those, those guys that the, the ability to apply structure self-structure to develop habits is far more effective than relying on inspiration, motivation, influence, right? Because what if you forget your headphones when you go to the gym? Do you just not do your workout, right? Um, I don't know. You stuck listening to the latest Britney Spears tunes at the Y? Like, what what are we doing here? Do we jump in? If we're doing swimming as a workout, do we jump in with with headphones? Like, right? Um, if you're relying on something other than yourself to get you going and and to to make things jump for you or or to to make things sustainable for you then you're never going to take any responsibility because it's not you who's doing that. You're relying on someone else. So that whatever that someone or something else is won't be, won't be taking the responsibility to fix something if it goes wrong. Right. And at the end of the day, if your, your habits aren't getting what you need to do, it's going to be you who needs to tweak and adjust those habits until you get to where you need to be. So I don't think that, you know, picking sides on certain issues and subjects and and things like that, yeah, we're all going to tend to lean to one side or the other. We are. Uh, We're all going to have opinions, right? And and let, let me just touch on this. Let me just touch on this. This whole thing, I I swear, if one more person tells me not to judge, I, I don't know. I'm going to lose my shit. I, this is my belief. Again, this is my opinion, my perspective based on my experience, my beliefs, and things like that. Um, not right, not wrong, not indifferent. It's just how I see things. We all judge every fucking day. We judge. We judge. A series of judgments leads to an opinion. We all form opinions about things, one way or another. Whether they're biased opinions, whether they're objective opinions, whether they're, you know, opinions that other people believe or not. If they're fluid and they're objective and open opinions and things like that, there's a series of small judgments that leads to that. It's a progression, just like mostly everything else in life. There's a a progression. So it's going to happen. 
Um, but just know when we do this and, and we become so opinionated that our way is the right way and we're heading down the right road to having a big ego, uh, um, that leads to conflict, that leads to um, ineffectiveness, that leads to inefficiency, that leads to a lot of things, uh, wa- a lot of wasted time with that. Uh, instead of trying to work towards a common goal in fixing something, addressing something, uh, a common objective, a common uh, mission statement, or, or whatever it is that we're trying to to accomplish. And I think these days in our society now, I think that's one thing that we're missing. We're, we're not working towards a common goal. Um, if anyone out there knows of you know, what the hell we're working towards, please reach out. You can find me on the gram, uh, on Facebook. I have Twitter, but I, I don't use it much. Um, but that's a legit question. What the hell are we wor- working towards? And, and, and at the end of the day, um, it, it's, it's on the, speaking of emotion, it, it's, it tends to be sad, right? It saddens people and, and it's disheartening and, and things like that. How do we fix it? That's tough, right? It's tough because you're up against some pretty formidable propaganda machines on both sides, right? On both sides, objectivity, open-mindedness, all that. And it, it, it creeps into every everything almost every workplace every environment everything that almost any entity that you can think of it creeps in right and that leads to division and that leads to a complete breakdown and i think you know certainly in my world my little bubble you know where i work and and live and and all that other kind of stuff i think that's that's very real right i also work uh in another environment that um it's not as real but i think there's some underlying legitimacy to that I just think on the surface it's it's maybe more masked and and presented you know kind of presented better so um but i i I do think it's there and for young people out there, decide what your values are, what your principles are um based upon whatever value in value system that uh, you've grown up with or whatever value systems out there, there's a shitload, right? Um, a lot of it is religion based, right? This whole country was born in Judeo Christian values. Um, but there, there, there's a shitload of things out there. Even the wall ID code, from you know ancient Afghanistan, which is still in in use today, um, look these up. Um, look at the methods of of habits. You know James Clare has a great great book and a great method for habits. Um, look into these things. Um, better ourselves first. That's what we're looking to do. You know um, we're looking to become. As individual leaders, we're looking to become the most effective parts of the team. So when our opportunity comes to lead others, those principles carry with us, right? Um, We would love to, as leaders, we would love to pass on our experiences, our mistakes and lessons from from the past to our our teams right um all in in hopes of creating better leaders than we are which strengthens the team and 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 makes everyone more effective in in reaching 
our long-term goals or our long-term mission statements or fulfilling those one way or another. So that's what we're looking to do. That's the, the end game for us, right? I don't know, you know, for individual entities and organizations, you know, what that looks like as far as goals and things like that. But one thing I do know based on the issues we're facing now as a society, the issues that are all over the place that are smacking us at every turn. I know that the, the jumping on the bandwagon from one extreme and or the other is definitely not the answer. It's, it's a cop out. It's the easy way to do things. And that trickles down even, like I said, even into the workplace. Um, there's got to be some objectivity, right? Um, and sometimes, this is the truth, you'll never know why, right? You'll never know why. So as a professional, you have to accept that, right? It doesn't mean you shouldn't try. You shouldn't put in the effort. You should try to understand why so you can, you know, promote more engagement. The more engagement, the the, the more effort and, and um, no, no matter what you believe. If you believe in the overall mission, but not maybe not that application of, of what you're doing or that application of, of how you're going to meet the next objective. Um, it's not always going to go the way you want it to or the way you, you think it should go at all, right? And sometimes you have to accept that. That's all part of being a professional. Um, but it doesn't mean you, you can't be tactful and respectful in seeking out why somebody's approach is the way it is or um, why, you know, we as a team are doing things X, Y, and Z when A, B, and C seems to be the more efficient way. It, 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 again, it, it helps you with your learning process and it helps you to remain open-minded and it helps you, you to remain objective and, and, and um, take an approach of less ego that helps the overall team. But for now, it looks like, you know, we, we're, we're embracing the suck with the, the extremes, right? Um, and we can apply that to whatever hot topic is out now. And unfortunately, we have quite a few of them. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't make it make our little circle of the world or little space in the world uh, a little more effective by implementing implementing some of these approaches and putting in a little extra effort into ourselves to make ourselves a better part of the team or a better teammate or a better coworker or a better whatever um a better part of whatever organization that you're in. And it all starts with leading self. Um, so that's my two cents right now into uh, current events and the things that are going on. It's, um, it's not easy. Uh, no one's trying, no one's certainly I'm not sitting here trying to blow smoke up anyone's ass. It's um, it is what it is. Um, we don't have to, we may have to accept it as, as what it is right now, but we, we certainly don't have to accept that for ourselves. Uh, for yourself, it is what you want it to be. It is what you choose, um, choose it to be. And, and that's just, um, and that comes through some, some work. Um, but in my opinion, Again, jumping on one side to another is a cop out. It's it's a bitch move. It's it's an easy way out. It's um, it's weak. It's weak across the board. You're you're putting one side above the sum of the whole, which is detrimental to the overall organization across the board. So, um, that's my ramble on current events and, and, um, approaches as far as individual leaders and, and moving on up and ascending to a 
assumed and appointed positions. So um, I appreciate your time, and we'll definitely catch you on the next one. We'll probably be launching that next week sometime. So thanks for listening. We'll see you guys, talk to you guys soon. I want to thank everyone for listening to this week's episode of Fido Talk with Dave Thompson. If you would, please subscribe and review. It helps a lot. Uh, share the word with your friends and family. Have them check it out and provide some feedback. We'd love to hear it. Check us out at barebonesleadership.com for the latest blog and different perspectives on everything leadership. Follow us on the gram and on our newly updated Facebook page. Uh, Share your comments, your thoughts, your views. Any and all feedback is always welcome. And don't forget, keep kicking those fucking doors in. And as always, Fido. I appreciate you guys listening. Take care. And see you next time.